Deacon David, uh, I want to thank you very much for those very kind words of welcome to me today. And I know that um, I've said thank you already to Father Sorgi as he is just about to make his way to meet with the Malayalam speaking community, uh, the stream, uh, and I know that uh, he will be sharing with them something of his own faith and his own insights, and of course his teaching as a priest. And that's important, and I'm delighted today to, to receive your welcome. We, we all need to be welcomed. We all need to experience that sense of the welcome that Jesus offers us through other men and women of faith, through those who are baptized in his life, death, and resurrection. And I have no hesitation in thanking you for the welcome which I need and which I receive from you today. I'm reminded um, of the example that Pope Francis has given to all of us. It makes me think, in Deacon David's words, you have no need whatsoever to apologize for welcoming me here because this is an occasion, this is a particular place, and you could be, we could be gathered in any particular place, but it is the Lord who has called us together. The initiative, the beginning of this, lies in God's hands. All that we do, all that we are doing together here, is done in the power of Almighty God. So the first invitation, the first calling to each one of us in our hearts comes from God, comes from Him, through Jesus Christ. He calls us together. It is His welcome. It is His initiative. The work begins with him, and it is fruitful because we are moved in our hearts to respond to that calling. So, men and women of faith, all the baptized, whatever our calling within the body of Christ, within the church, and I spoke earlier today, bishops, priests, deacons, religious sisters, married men and women, families, children, catechists, missionaries, all of us need to hear again the calling of the Lord, to be together, to witness together, to pray together, and to sense within our hearts his welcome. It is in him that we are at home, I can sense and I see that you are very much at home on this day. Whatever our backgrounds, whatever our experience, whatever the different cultural experiences that we have, the gifts that we bring together, there is a sense of oneness and of unity. It was expressed when we celebrated the Mass. We experienced it together there, where the Mass, the Eucharist, unites us. It levels the differences between us. We are at one in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we come together, I notice Father Sarji said, we'll come along at about 12 o'clock. By custom, by tradition, the church has a prayer, which we say at 12 noon. Three times a day, we're encouraged to say this prayer. And I want to invite you, please feel comfortable to remain seated, but with the statue of Our Lady, Rosa Mystica, we're reminded of the Incarnation, that in Mary, the Mother of the Lord, the Word of God became flesh. And our great prayer, which I know uh, unites us today, round about this midday hour, we'll pray together. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, and we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross he brought to the glory of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. May the divine assistance remain always with us. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. We prayed the Angelus prayer, which is so important a part of our tradition as Catholic Christians. But our faith, which we share with all the baptized in the incarnation of Jesus Christ, is something that is expressed in that prayer. And today, in the moments that we have together, I would like to think a little about the incarnation as being at the center of our faith and the place of Mary, the mother of the Lord, in that story as it unfolded. Because when we reflect on the witness of Mary as the mother of, of the Lord and a disciple of her son, then we're encouraged to see something about our own discipleship. Today, when we gather together in such great numbers, I mentioned during the Mass earlier, it's wonderful opportunity to experience the church, to experience the church in this way as the body of Christ, made up of many different people, of many different members. In the New Testament, St. Paul has this remarkable insight, which he shares in a number of places, of our calling to be not just individual men and women of faith, for whom our baptism is the foundation of our faith. But when we are baptized, we are baptized, yes, into the death, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we also are led into the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is the people of God. The body of Christ, of which we are part, St. Paul says, always goes together with the head the Lord Jesus himself. And in St. Paul's teaching, there is an understanding that something is lacking when they are not together, the head and the body. So for ourselves, we must never ever feel isolated in our faith. Wherever we live, wherever we work, we may find that day by day, we're largely surrounded by other people who don't share our faith. That may be our experience. It may even be the experience that we have within our own families. That's something we have to remember. The Lord has placed us with families, with work colleagues, with neighbors, with friends who maybe don't share our faith, but we are never cut off from our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are never cut off from the body of Christ. And that is part of our faith in the incarnation. When, in what is only a few months time, we'll celebrate the incarnation at Christmas, and I know that when we start September, how quickly that comes around again. But it's important that we recall, what we celebrate at the birth of the Lord, the incarnation, the word of God took flesh, so that we, in our flesh, could become part of that body of Christ. We are united with the, with the members and with the head. And our baptism is the foundation for this. So when we gather together today, we think about our baptism. We remember the faith of our parents and our godparents, 
those who brought us to receive the sacrament of baptism. God takes the initiative. God begins this journey of faith within each one of us. It is God and the Holy Spirit who has brought us to faith. Through the decisions which our parents took to have us baptized, they and parents today may have had a whole mix of reasons. Some of them may have been cultural, it's what we do. Some of them may have been, have felt pressure from others in the family to bring their child to be baptized. We can do good things for mixed reasons. And then when we look at the good that comes from the decisions we make, we realize it wasn't ourselves. It wasn't my wisdom that brought me to this moment. It wasn't my goodness, but it was God's goodness and God's wisdom at work within me. And I, in my sinfulness, heard and experienced the prompting of the Spirit to do some good thing. So we thank God for the way in which the Holy Spirit was at work within our parents and godparents, enabling us to begin that journey of faith in baptism. And I think today we pray for the many parents who are here, together with so many children, uh, for listening to God's word, speaking within them, bringing their own children to begin that journey of faith in baptism. Baptism, I say, incorporates us into the body of Christ. We are his members. And that is who we are here, gathered together today. That's why I said to Deacon David, I accept and thank you for your welcome to me, because you are the body of Christ gathered. And at this moment, united with me as the local bishop, but wherever you gather in the mass, you're united with the local bishop there. To me, today, is also for me a strengthening in faith. I'm grateful to you. Thank you for your prayers. For me, for the priests who are here, for the priests who you remember in your prayers from our parish communities, for the deacons, for the religious sisters, the men and women religious, for those who witness to their faith through their vocation. And I know you pray for married couples and for families too, as well as individuals. All our intentions brought together. But I'm grateful for those prayers because they enrich the life of our own local church in the diocese. You draw, you draw strength, as I am doing today, from being here in this place. But the strength we draw is through the witness of one another from our Lord himself at work within us. The words that we may share with one another are words that we have tried to listen to in the scriptures and in our prayer, in our closeness to Christ. The way in which we're prompted to listen to each other and to encourage each other today is part of his work within the church, the body of Christ. So on this occasion, I'm glad that especially seeing you here, so many people bring so many different diverse experiences. We come from many different cultures. But the inspiration to gather together today has come from the life of the church in a particular part of the world. And as the local bishop here in the Archdiocese of Birmingham, I wish also to acknowledge that the gift which we have been privileged to receive in the families and the clergy and the religious whose lives of faith began far from here, in the churches and the parishes. I'm thinking of the, the tradition of which we are becoming part here today, in the churches and the communities uh, in India and in Kerala in particular. But of course in other parts of India, in other parts of Asia, and I know many of us represent roots of faith in other parts of the world today. Those are all welcomed in this place. But it is important to say that as a church, as the body of Christ, we have that characteristic. We are in all parts of the world. That's important. And it's a, an aspect of being the Catholic Church. 
The body of Christ, the Catholic Church, is present in all parts of the world, but also brings together those many different insights, the work of the Holy Spirit, working within and alongside different cultures, enabling us to deepen in our understanding of the presence of God in the world. So today, first of all, I wish to thank those who have brought their experience and their witness of faith from their family homes, from parishes and from towns and cities and the countryside, and especially to thank the communities from Kerala and other parts of India. I think of the witness of the Saro Malabar Church, the Saro Malankara Church. I know that today there are Jacobite Orthodox Christians with us, and of course there are others from other parts of the Christian Church, the Body of Christ, uh, all across the world. But we give thanks for that witness and for the tradition of which we are becoming part. And while it's important to be together in this place for this moment of inspiration and a spiritual nourishment, deepening our faith as individuals, as families, and as witnesses to the body of Christ, it's also very important that we take these things with us into the parish communities where we are, and that we seek opportunities to bring the gifts that the Lord entrusts to us into those communities. Now, it's not always easy to do that, to have the confidence to turn to others within our parish communities to say to our clergy, there is something which I have that I can share within our parish community. But to try to find ways of doing that is important. And the Lord will assist and will strengthen you in that. Think of the communities of which you are part today. Think of the wonderful gifts which come to the neighborhood, to the local people, through the witness of your own parish community. Again, we're never isolated from the church wherever we are. And today, we're not isolated from those communities which have become our home within our parishes. In a few months' time, Pope Francis is going to inaugurate the Jubilee Year of Mercy. We reflect on the life of Mary as the disciple of the Lord, as the mother of God, and we pray to her as the mother of mercies. In the Hail Holy Queen, one of our favorite prayers. And last week, I was together with a pilgrimage of seminarians in Walsingham, and our Cardinal, Cardinal Vincent Nichols, reminded us of that title of Mary, Mother of Mercies. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies. Shall we pray that together? Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies. Hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. So what is the place that we acknowledge and recognize of Mary according to God's providence? Why has God placed Mary, the mother of the Lord, uh, in such a prominent place within our tradition as Catholics and in our lives of faith? Because we believe that in the incarnation, our Lord Jesus Christ took flesh from the Virgin Mary. The scriptures tell us that as his mother, he received the whole of his humanity according to God's will from Mary, his mother. That is our faith. It's founded in the scriptures. It's our biblical faith. And it's the reason that we thank God for the gift of Mary's motherhood. Because in his humanity, in his human nature, God has revealed himself to us in the human nature of Jesus Christ. We cannot 
understand anything of God's goodness except looking by looking at Jesus Christ, the incarnate word. The fullness of God is present in him. Everything is present in him. He is the visible presence of God within our world. And we're united to him and in, incorporated into his body. And we believe that it is through the human nature of Mary that the word took flesh. It was in the womb of Mary that the incarnation began through the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon her. And just as you will know within your own families, sometimes people will turn to you and say, especially as we get older, you're just like your father. You're just like your mother. We recognize that in ourselves, in our humanity. Sometimes we're shocked. Am I, am I so like my father? I can see your mother in you, Sister Pius. <laughs> I didn't know your mother, but I'm sure... I'm sure that's true, isn't it? And, um, and sometimes we're pleased, and sometimes we're... Well, we think, I have to think about that. But we receive, some th we receive our human nature by God's will through our parents. In Jesus' case, we believe he received the fullness of his human nature through Mary. So in contemplating Mary, in what we see of her in the scriptures, we are genuinely led to a deeper understanding of the humanity of Jesus. And it is by understanding what the scriptures present to us of the humanity of Jesus Christ our Lord that we come to see, to get a glimpse of God's goodness and truth and beauty for he is fully revealed in the word made flesh. That is why for Catholics, Mary is so important. That's why I think of her when I hear the parables of our Lord, when I hear the stories that he used. Think of the parable of the woman kneading the bread, kneading the yeast into the bread. I can't think of that parable, that story, without remembering that the very first place that he saw that was at the side of his mother, watching her, as his mother made the bread, kneaded the dough, put the yeast into it, and prepared the food for the family. That's a very human story, but the Lord uses that experience in order to draw something of significance for all of us from that, that we are called to be like the yeast in the bread today, each one of us. But it's a story that reflects for me the human relationship between him and Mary, his mother. Think of the human tenderness and the mercy of Jesus Christ when he looked with forgiveness at others. As a human being, he must have learned something from the attitudes of Mary, his mother. She would have taught him so much about what it was to be forgiving, to make allowances for other people's failures to take care of the needy and to notice those who are in need. So many of those human characteristics for which we give thanks to the Father in Jesus Christ and which reveal to us the fullness of God's nature, those human things he received from his birth as a human being from his mother. That is why as Catholics we contemplate Mary, why we pray and include her in our prayers. It is for what she teaches us in her own human nature, in the story of her life of faith, but is what she shows us about the humanity of her son. Because we say, Jesus says, to have seen me is to have seen the Father. To have seen me is to see the Father. St. John's Gospel witnesses to that. We also know that when we look at Jesus, we see something of the humanity which is received from his mother. So it isn't simply an interest in Mary herself. She, like all of us, needed to receive the saving grace of her son in order to, be, to reach salvation. We believe as Catholics that that took place in her life at the very beginning of her life, that God prepared her to be the mother of his son. We believe in the Immaculate Conception that the grace of salvation was at work within Mary's life from the very, very beginning, from the very outset. But it is a grace that was achieved for her 
just as it is achieved for us in a mysterious way through the death and the resurrection of her son. She is at one with us in that. So we need uh, to remember what we really believe. And the prayers on the Feast of Our Lady's Immaculate Conception, December the 8th, remind us of that. That it is through the saving work of her son that she is preserved from sin from the very beginning of her life. The human, the human nature of Jesus Christ is the way in which we are led to know the Father. So today we give thanks for our faith in the Incarnation, for our closeness to Mary, the Mother of the Lord, for our being incorporated into the body of Christ, members of his body, and for the baptism which is the foundation of our lives and the reason that we go out from here to take our mission into the parishes, the communities, and the neighborhoods where we live with real confidence and with renewed faith and enthusiasm. Today, thank you for your welcome to me. Thank you for your witness of faith. And thank you for what I know you will take back into the parish communities where you live and worship God day by day, year by year. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And a final word, which... Uh, I ask you to remember in prayer, in this place, we happen to be very close. We're actually, when I think of our parishes, Father Joseph was here earlier from Worley. Um, he may be here, I think he still is here. I said, am I in your parish today, your canonical territory? No, he said, he said, this is St. Michael's. So the local parish here is St. Michael's, West Bromwich. And I remember that this was a parish which was founded and the church was built by the Venerable Ignatius Spencer. Ignatius Spencer from an aristocratic family, as you know, the same family as Princess Diana. Nevertheless, Ignatius Spencer wanted to, to live his life in service of the local communities, in service of those in real need. And in the day, church, in his own time, um, he was instrumental in bringing a place of worship uh, a faithful community here in West Bromwich. So we ask for the prayers of Ignatius Spencer to unite himself in prayer with us today. He was a passionist priest, but so local, spent much of his life here. And we thank him for the tradition of which we're part and where we're united with him in faith. So may God bless you in the remainder of our day together. Thank you. Amen.